Today I met up with Maddie to talk about her letter and the places she thinks I need to prioritize during my visit to Artesia. One of the things I did write about in the my note was mm -hmm. there is an underground school here, the first yeah. one, ABO. That sounds kind of intriguing and scary at the same yeah. time. <laughs> my dad is assistant superintendent. Maybe he can give y'all a private tour of oh, ABO. That would be nice. Yeah. The story behind the subterranean structure of ABO and its dual role as a school and fallout shelter goes back to the days of the Cold War. With its own oil refinery and proximity to White Sands Missile Range and the former Walker Air Force Base, Artesia was considered vulnerable to Soviet attack. And while not generally open to the public, Abo's fascinating history demanded I take Maddie and her dad up on the offer. All right, Danny, so we're here at Abo School, which I know has a lot of history. So can you give me maybe um, some of the background of the fallout shelter, the role it played here in Artesia? It was an elementary school, but it was built uh, with some federal funds back in 1962 to also double as a fallout shelter. And so it was made to house several hundred people in the event that the, an atomic bomb was dropped. So not the only the elementary school kids, but also the town of Artesia, this yes. would be the place where they would go. Yes, yes. <laughs> and of course, uh, it was 1962 is when it opened. Uh, in October of 1962 was the Cuban Missile Crisis. Mm -hmm. It was just a hot topic, yeah. a hot issue at that time. And there were people for the dedication here from all over the world. And in fact, President Kennedy uh, was supposed to come. And in the office here at Abo Elementary School was a telegram with uh, President Kennedy's regrets for not being able to come to wow. the dedication of the school. I have this image in my mind of what it looks like, but I, I want to actually go down there and take a look. Can we do that? You bet, we certainly can. Let's do it. As we make our way for the doors to the school, I imagine the different scenarios bringing people to this entrance. The end of recess, or what would feel like the end of days. This is the main entrance, uh, and then after everyone is inside, there's this giant steel door yeah. that would be closed um, behind everyone. Can't miss that. Yeah, and it is heavy too, so we'll, we'll get it going. Man, just listen to that. That's straight steel, huh? And then the door would be shut, and you could latch it there. There is another small door just outside this door mm -hmm. that someone could come in, and they would they would then go through this decontamination shower. I can't believe this is a, an actual thing that people prepared for. That's amazing. Still processing the decontamination showers, we head downstairs to take in some of the other unique elements of the school in the mechanical room. You don't think about the, the special needs of an underground school, um, and especially when you're coupling it with the needs of a fallout shelter. Mm -hmm. There are two modes of a building, a normal mode mm -hmm. and then a, a, a survival mode. Talk about extremities. Yes. <laughs> normal <laughs> and extreme. <laughs> that's, that's the way uh, it is. Right, so this is everything you would need essentially to run a, a small city, a small right. town yes. for an extended amount of time. Yes, that's, huh. that's exactly right. The reality of Abo's emergency role is becoming more vivid. This is the cafeteria and it also would double as the recreation room uh, if there were to be a, a fallout incident and the civil defense plan mm -hmm. uh, in case of a fallout. There were lots of activities that, that were used around the clock. Uh, everyone was on a different schedule. You may eat breakfast at 9 p.m. and your day start at 9 p.m. and you'd have uh, a recreation time. It's not like your Carcadian rhythm is <laughs> are in, in rhythm with the sun because you're not seeing it. So eight o'clock is arbitrary at that, that point. That's exactly right. Thankfully, Abu never served as a nuclear fallout shelter, but remained open as a school until 1995 and today is used for federal law enforcement training. Walking through the empty hallways of Abo and hearing the stories of the school's morgue and the schematics for arranging hundreds of cots within these classrooms connects me to a chapter of history I may not have otherwise imagined. <laughs> 